Welcome to another episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies, and in this video, going to do a review of the Kilhoman Saturns cask. I saw these at uh, Kilhoman Distillery when I visited in July 2023, but you can also pick these up at your local uh, whiskey store. But before we get into this whiskey, I'm going to tell you about the profile of Kilhoman Distillery and the profile of this whiskey. Kilhoman Distillery is located on Rockside Farm in Brook Lady, Isla, Scotland. Kilhoman is the westernmost distillery in Isla and the only distillery on Isla that is not directly on the sea. The name Kilhoman comes from an old church whose ruins lie on the picturesque Macure Bay. Kilhoman Distillery was founded in 2005 by Anthony Wills and remains an independent, family-run distillery. It was the first new distillery on Isla in 124 years. Kilhoman Distillery is one of six Scottish distilleries still working with traditional floor maltings, which produces 30% of their own malt. The other 70% of their malt comes from Port Allen maltings, which are peated at 50 ppm. Kilhoman Distillery has two 1.2 ton stainless steel semi-louder mash tons. Kilhoman has 12 stainless steel 6,000 liter washbacks. Kilhoman has four stills, that is two wash stills and two spirit stills. The Kilhoman Core Range. The Kilhoman Macure Bay Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, peated at 50 ppm, Asian X Bourbon Cast 90%, X Oloroso Sherry Cast 10%. It's a non a statement, it's non chill filtered, and has natural color, Spotted at 46% alcohol by volume and sells for about $49. The Kilhoman Senegh Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged in ex Oloroso Sherry Cast for the majority and ex Bourbon Cast for the minority. As a non A statement, it's non chill filtered, has natural color, bottled at 46% alcohol by volume and sells for anywhere between $60 and $80. The Kilhoman Loch Gorm Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, it's aged in ex Oloroso Sherry Cast. It's non chill filtered, has natural color, spotted at 46% alcohol by volume, and sells for anywhere between $110 and $120. The Kilhoman 100% Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. 100% of the barley comes from Isla. It's Asian X Bourbon Cast. It's a non A statement. It's non chill filtered, has natural color, spotted at 50% alcohol by volume, and sells for about $110. Kilhoman Distillery also has limited releases such as the Kilhoman Saturn's Cask Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey Batch 2, a limited edition release of just 1,260 bottles. It's made from a marriage of ex bourbon cask and Oloroso Sherry cask at 46% alcohol by volume with a Saturn's cask at natural strength. It is non chill filtered, has natural color, it's bottled at 49.7% alcohol by volume. It was imported by Impex Beverages in San Francisco and sells for about $93. So if you don't know what a Saturns is, it is a very sweet uh, wine from the uh, Bordeaux region of France and within the Grave region of France. Now, some people get a little confused on sweet wines. They think of Saturns as an ice wine or something like that, but there are generally three categories of sweet wines and how they are made that are very distinct. The first is a straw wine, which is made from raisined or desiccated grapes that have been laid out traditionally on mats to allow them to dry in the sun to intensify the sugars and the sweetness of the grapes and then the wine. This would include straw wines from Austria, Amarone from Italy, Vin de Pays, from France and Per Jimenez from Spain, as well as Ben Santo from Santorini. The second is ice wines or ice vine from Germany, uh, made from Riesling and also from uh, Canada. Basically, the grapes are allowed to remain on the, uh, the vine into uh, the coldness of winter and ice has formed around the grapes. They are then harvest and then gently squeezed to get this raisined, frozen juice out of the grapes. 
The third category would be Botrytis wines, also known as noble rot wines. This would include Baroness Lisa and Trocken Baroness Lisa from Germany, Tokai from Hungary, and Saturns from Bordeaux, France. Basically, Botrytis cenaria, or noble rot, is like a mold that comes in with the fog. It infects the grapes, and this Botrytis cenaria uh, basically sucks out the moisture out of the grapes, leaving behind a lot of intensified sugar. The bunches of grapes are then ha ha harvested by hands, and they go through the, uh, the uh, vineyards in what's called tries various times, and only picking those which are ready to be plucked. They don't look too appetizing when you look at them, but these are very expensive wines, generally speaking, because of the amount of work it takes to hand harvest these grapes. So, uh, Botrytis has a very distinctive character to it that makes it stand out. It's kind of musty. It's like a very, very, very sweet wine, but has a slight musty character that, to them. And uh, you may be familiar with another Saturn's cask whiskey, which is, this is the Glen Morangy uh, Nectar Dior, a non-peated Saturn's cask uh, whiskey. I have not gotten into this one yet, but I will in the near future, but I have tasted it on other occasions. A very delicate, sweet, fruity, uh, and citrus forward whiskey. So let's get into this Cahoma. Now, I've talked about aeration and adding water in other videos. Particularly, I find peated whiskeys benefit from aeration, allows them to open up. It also allows the whiskey uh, the spirit, the fruit, and the peat smoky character to become much more uh, harmonious, much more intermingled. So don't be afraid to pour yourself a wee dram and let it sit out for an hour, particularly if you just open the bottle. I've even done it with a, a new bottle. Open it up, put a little challenge coin on it at the beginning of the day, and let it sit there like this. I'll put it in there before work. When I come home from work, it should be ready to go. If it's a cask strength whiskey, maybe put in a drop of water, uh, allow several hours for it to uh, become more intermingled into the whiskey and so forth. But now this one's not, as you saw there, isn't cask strength, so I don't necessarily need to uh, add a lot of water for that. However, uh, from the neck pour, I found the whiskey to be a little bit mm, not harmonious, a little bit disjointed. Uh, you're getting the peat up front and sort of sweetness and fruit character on the back and the characteristics weren't really playing well together. Now, having experienced Nectar Dior from Glen Morangy and some other Saturns, cask whiskeys, I was sort of expecting this one to be super sweet, sort of unctuous and that sort of character, but it's not. There is a nice counterbalance between the peat and the sweetness of uh, the cask that sort of evens out the sweet, sweetness. So it's not a super, it is sweet, but not super sweet uh, like you might expect from a Saturn's cask. But I found it did need more harmony. It did need the peat character and the sweetness to come together. So I get the peat, I get the smoke. It's a little bit ashy, canned peaches, honey, oranges, a little bit of lemon, some chocolate, a little bit of saltiness on the palate. This whiskey has benefited from some, from some aeration. I've got it down to about here, just below the shoulder, but I have found I like it even more with just a teaspoon of water. The water can help not only open up certain aromas and flavors, even in a non-peated whiskey, but in the case of a peated whiskey, it helps the elements become much more integrated, much more harmonious to play well together so that there is a greater synthesis between the fruit character and the smoke. Give it a nice gentle turn no shaky shaky. 
The peat smoke has now moved somewhat more into the middle, into the background. The fruit character has come up. Honey, orange, canned peaches, maybe a little bit of lemon, chocolate on the palate. Huge improvement. Before it was like boom, boom, and aromas, okay, peat, and then fruit. Now it's more of peat and fruit, or smoke and fruit working together. So now you're getting more like a barbecued peaches, barbecued pineapple, a barbecued uh, super ripe pears, laced with honey, has a better transition. It also doesn't feel really 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 thin i don't know why because that at this abv it shouldn't feel thin but it was feeling thin uh on on entry now it's a little more it's silky or smooth as some people like to say in texture it has better transitions and i better glide across the palette now it doesn't have a huge variation from the front in the middle and then to the finish uh, but it has improved uh, with just a little bit of water it never had any burn, it doesn't have any burn, it doesn't have any real uh, tingle or, or a lot of warmth to it. Peat tends to mitigate uh, the hard edges of younger whiskeys, uh, as well as counterbalance or sort of cover up uh, new makey characteristics if you have a real young whiskey. Um, but this doesn't uh, suffer from, from any of that. It's a nice whiskey, it's not overly complex, it's um, different than say your typical sherry cast or your typical uh, bourbon cast. I think it's well made, but I don't think this is my particular style. So objectively, I think it's well made. Subjectively, uh, it's not my particular cup of tea. I can't see myself going, mm, I'm really in the mood for this whiskey. So what would I give in terms of a score? Objectively, I think in terms of layers of complexity, development, um, the tr transitions, I put it around 88, around, around 88 uh, points. Uh, it doesn't have a dramatic transition through it. The finish is uh, moderate. It has a slight mouth coating feel to it, which I like. I like the texture of it after you've add just a teaspoon of water. It felt thin before that. So I think it's a real nice whiskey. I think there are people out there who are gonna like this whiskey, even love this whis whiskey, far more than I do because this is their particular kind of thing. So if you have tried uh, the Kilholman Saturn's cask, uh, Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, and you really, really liked it, uh, let me hear your comments down below. If you've tried it and maybe you weren't that big on it, uh, then let me know, know down below. Now, if you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it. If you would subscribe, ring the bell to be notified for when I go live or post a new video. And if you're already a subscriber, I want to thank you very much. All right, until next time, Sanja. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.